Okay, so now we can make this guy walk. I'm ready to do it, right? I'm in the character comp uh, file and I have my symbol with all the little symbols nested inside and all the little drawings are ready to move. So I'm, since this is my template, my master file here, uh, I don't want to animate this. I want to I always have this ready to go if I want to do anything with him. So I'm going to save this as a new file. We'll call this walk cycle. Walk cycle 01. All right, and now we can animate him. So I'm going to drill down into this symbol and we can start posing him out. So as I mentioned, you want to have a plan before you begin and sort of know where you're going. So I have a few questions I need to answer before I start. And they are, how many frames should the cycle be? How long the duration of the walk? And how large a step is he taking? What's the distance of those strides? So they can measure that out so that his feet track and don't slide when he's walking. So uh, let's answer the first question. Like a layer here for my timing. Um, I want my cycle to be 24 frames. And I know that because it's, uh, it's a nice leisurely pace for a walk. It's also one second long, and it's also 24 frames is nice to slice up in terms of you can divide 24 by 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 12. So you have a lot of opportunities for finding places to do your breakdowns and your uh, extreme poses and everything. So <clears throat> that answers that. Uh, however, with animate, um, I know I'm going to be in betweening from one key to another, and you always need two keys to set an in-between and animate. Um, so if I'm looping, and this is frame one, and I go to frame 24 and it moves back around again, frame one is gonna happen here, but on the timeline it may be frame 25. Or it will be frame 25, it'll look identical. So I'm gonna take these keyframes and just duplicate them here temporarily so that I have a target for my keyframes to hit. Because if I wanted to have this loop seamlessly from like I had a pose on frame 20, and I wanna tween it to what's frame one, and it's not going to know to loop around and then keep, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't tween from right to left. You know, it only tweens from left to right. So I need to have these targets here initially. So that takes care of that. Um, what else should I do? Uh, I want to give myself a ground plane to work with. So I'm going to make those outlines a little bit. I'm going to get my, get my rulers visible. I'm going to drag down a guide. It's about there, it looks pretty good. Okay, uh, let me save this. Now I'll, uh, I'm ready to start animating. So I'm only gonna focus on the leg. I don't need to pose this whole body out at all those parts and keep track of two arms, two legs, a tail, and a head, and a body, and all the extra stuff, ears, and all that, you know, I'm gonna animate in layers. And focus on, you know, broad movements to fine movements. So I'm only gonna animate one leg, and then I can duplicate it and offset it and get the other leg for free. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and it's funny, I, when I built this guy, I actually started, I built this as a walk to begin with, and I actually just started animating legs and then designed everything else after to kind of suit what I had with the legs. And it's not normally the order you would do things in, but what's interesting in Animate is that, you know, you have a digital workflow, which is basically nonlinear. I can do things in almost any order that I want to. I mean, it's possible to animate everything first or do all the motion first, and then go back in and populate that motion with art. And so that uh, you can you know, do all the, you can literally animate before you design, you know, or have your animation inform your designs, perhaps. Um, so it just leaves things open ended, and you can kind of work in any order. And it may not always be the most efficient, but at least it, it leaves things endlessly editable in a way where you can go back and make changes. I, I could animate him and then swap out all the art later and get a different character. So that's kind of cool. But let's get back to this. All right, so uh, I've got a leg, and I said I just want to animate one leg. So uh, I'm going to need to make some layers here for, oh, I have one for my timing. So I already know that I'm going to have a walk. It's going to be 24 frames, and I'm not going to get into everything about a walk cycle, but hopefully you're aware of the poses in a walk cycle. You have your contact, your pass, and your up and your down, four, I guess, essentials. Your up and down can be connected to your contact and pass or disconnected from them or have more up and downs, you can have a double bounce or whatever. I'm gonna make this walk as plain and simple and sort of clean and uniform as possible. So I'm not gonna worry about labeling my up and down. They're gonna actually be part of 
my up will be in my passing and my down will be in my contact and um, it'll just be built in. I'm not gonna have to worry about labeling them separately and posing them out separately. That'll just be part of the process. So I can actually label these four frames, these four positions. It's contact and passing and it does it twice because you have your your near leg does its contact and then it does its pass and then your far leg does the contact and pass. So we'll do that way and we'll boom like that. All right, that's pretty good. So that answers my timing question. Now my spacing question, how, how far uh, apart should each frame be or, or what the length of his stride? So I will go ahead and build a layer here for my, we'll call this uh, stride length. And then I'm gonna build another layer here for uh, foot position. And uh, let's populate these layers with the things that I just said they were gonna be. Whoop, not the poot position, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and build a little uh, gizmo to track uh, the position of the foot, which is gonna be a red line, vertical red line. So like that, and like that, and we'll symbolize that. Let's see if I spell it right this time. Almost. All right, so that's looking good. And then the stride length, I'm gonna hold off on that until I actually build this thing out. Um, Cause I can make one now, but I'll probably have to change it later. So let me actually do the stride length. Um, oh, I'll need some more guides. I have my foot uh, resting on the ground. I wanna drag some guides right to the smack in the middle of this um, pivot point so that I have a reference for where my east-west is as well as where my north-south is. So that looks pretty okay. And uh, I'm also going to go in, since I have my timeline is set for my, this will be my walk cycle, I guess what the leg is doing. I'm going to go inside of this leg and I'm going to um, bend the knee. I have to go inside of the leg symbol to bend the knee. I can't bend the knee on the outside, which is the one kind of idiosyncrasy with building uh, nested hi hierarchies by nesting symbols in animators. I can't I have to kind of go animate in, inside of each symbol depending on what needs to happen. So uh, I want my timeline to, on the inside to be 24 frames as well. And if I do it before I do any animation, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier. Otherwise, if I start setting keys for this leg and it only has one frame in the timeline, uh, it's gonna set it on frame one. And then when I extend it later, I have to go change the exposures for these after the fact and it becomes kind of a, cumbersome process. So I'm going to select this layer here. I'm going to copy it with my timing notes. I'm going to go into my comp that has the lower leg, the upper leg, and this is empty. I'm just going to paste this layer in here for my timing and I can get rid of this right now because I don't need it. And I can extend these out also. And I can even, the upper leg is not going to have any animation on it at all, so I can lock it, but I can just go ahead and now set these up with, I will probably have different knee bends on those four poses, so I can set those up right away. And now I think I'm pretty good to go. I think I'm all set for starting to pose this out. So this was my, call this walk cycle prep, and then we can start actually making it happen.